the Steelers still pretenders? <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be disrespectful because I'm very appreciative of what I'm seeing from them. They rushed for 166 yards yesterday. Jalen Warren and Najee Harris, I'm proud of what I saw from them last night. I believe in these brothers. I believe in Deontay Johnson. I believe in Pickens. But my, I'm sorry. I believe, I believe in their wide receivers. It's Kenny Pickett that I got questions about. It's their offense overall led by Matt Canada. I've got questions about, and this is why I'm going to sit up there and say for the moment they're pretenders from the standpoint that I don't foresee them winning the AFC North. If they get to the postseason, it'll be as a wild card, and I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. So that's where I'm at with the pretender status. But here's the biggest reason why. RC, Boss Scott, do y'all know what one of the biggest headlines is right now for the Pittsburgh Steelers outside of the win? No. It's the fact that their offensive coordinator, Matt Canada, oh, my Lord, he, was on, he wasn't in the booth last night. He was on the sideline. He's on, Did you know? He's I on mean, the stop sideline. The <laughs> I mean, stop, stop, stop the presses. Stop the presses. I mean, this is what the hell we've come to when we're talking about the Steelers, for crying out loud. The fact that their offensive coordinator, who a lot of people believe, hasn't gotten it done. I mean, they scored 7 and went up 7-0, and scoring a touchdown in the first quarter, really taking the lead for the first time this season. You're talking about the dude that instead of being in the booth, he was on the sideline. That's how bad you know things have been with the Steelers offensively. The fact that it's breaking news in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette <laughs> and beyond, and, 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 and clearly with ESPN and clearly with all the folks doing the highlights, that the, the offensive coordinator was on the sideline. I mean, stop the presses, touch our heart. You got to be kidding me. This is what we're talking about here. In the end, respect the 5-3 and three record, respect the fact that they're still in the hunt. I know that Mike Tomlin, once again, is showcasing his greatness. But when I say pretend, I'm comparing you to the creme de la creme of the AFC conference, which I don't consider them to be in that category. And that's why I'm going to stick with that right now for the time being. RC? Oh, it's my turn. Oh, I thought they said Sam Go ahead, bro. See, Sam Bar. We got to get these. My bad. We get these communications. Yeah, um, right. Let's go. I agree with Stephen A. They're pretenders, and they're pretenders in the worst way. They're imposters. They aren't a team that can win a championship. This isn't a team that could get to a conference championship. When you look at what you saw last night, it's the way the Steelers win football games. If you allow them to stay close, they have a coach who has preached belief, a coach who has preached situational football, and they find ways to make plays late. The defense comes up with something huge, starting with T.J. Watt and going on from T.J. Watt to guys like Mika Fitzpatrick who weren't available last night. Now, what is something that could build some confidence was the last drive with Deontay Johnson scoring a touchdown. It was Kenny Pickett fitting the ball right into him with Avery having tight coverage, Deontay Johnson making the play. Deontay Johnson actually dropping a touchdown on the play before catching the one to go up and win the football game. I don't like the fact, though, that because Deontay's back, now George Pickens is not involved. I did enjoy the fact that, okay, now we're running the football. Najee Harris being the powerful, explosive, physical runner that we need. Jalen Warren with the big move late in the game to get the football to the one-yard line. But this is the team that we're going to have to be excited about overcoming obstacles and adversities to beat the Tennessee Titans. How does that team beat the Miami Dolphins? How does that team beat the Cincinnati Bengals, the Baltimore Ravens, the Kansas City Chiefs? How does that team beat the Buffalo Bills? They don't. They just don't. We're overcoming and having to figure out ways to just be there. That's not the Pittsburgh Steeler way. And one of the things that hurt me most last weekend, if you listen to Trevor Lawrence mic'd up, he's on the sideline and he's dapping off his homeboys. They win the football game. And Bart, you know this better than anybody. When you hear a statement like this, they didn't even play Renegade. For those of you who don't know, some point every second half, they play Renegade by sticks. And it's all of the defensive highlights. And it's when you need a big stop to go win the game because it's important because the game is within reach. They never played that last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars because they knew, the PA announcer knew, and everybody <laughs> in the stadium knew that they weren't going to win that game. That's where the Pittsburgh Steelers are, and that's sad. See, I think uh, we, we're accustomed to the Steelers' way, but the Steelers' way has been under, the, under Ben Roethlisberger. 
right? You talk about the, the weapons on the outside. You talked about how good George Pickens was. You told us we know that Deontay Johnson can play. Najee Harris was a first-round draft pick. You know, Broderick Jones, who made his first appearance, you know, in the starting yeah, lineup, start. I, think, I think he represented himself very well, and he is <clears> going to have a bright future. You talk about the other, other side. The Steelers look like the Steelers, right, always having two outstanding pass rushers when you think about – uh, Watt on the outside. You think about Hightower. You talk about Mika Fitzpatrick, you know, playing the Troy Palomalo role. Little baby Peasy's out there doing his thing, you know, in his rookie year. He's only going <laughs> to get better. But what's different is the fact that the man behind center ain't Ben Roethlisberger. So all the things that we're accustomed to seeing and the reason that we don't believe in them is because we know on the other side, even within that division, is going to be a um, – Lamar Jackson is going to be a Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. and you're going to lose Joe more Burrow. of those games. And maybe Deshaun Watson, who knows if it's his shoulder or if he's just a shot player, but you have the worst quarterback in a division that has everything that you have and then something more at the quarterback position. I thought when they decided to draft Pickett, I thought that it was going – I thought it was a bad pick. I thought they should have waited. I understood that Ben was done. I thought they should have waited another year and tried to uh, make the answer or get a bridge quarterback, which they did with Trubisky, but he turned out not being the answer as well. So I think the fact that they're going to be stuck with Pickett for at least, I think, another three years, you're trying to make him something that he's not, and that's an elite passer, an elite quarterback, and he's not that. Now, we saw yesterday on the other side, we saw Will Levish show us something that we didn't know that he had. Already, he looks like a better quarterback than Pickens, in my opinion. Yes. So, so, to me, I'm saying that it's a quarterback position, and you don't just fix that by improving the offensive line and running. But Tomlin is always going to Tomlin his way into wins, and nobody can win uglier better than <laughs> Mike Tomlin. So, 17 mm -hmm. uh, times, uh, times 2 is 34. Times three is 51. So what we're talking about here, whether it's 16 or when it moved to 17 games, we're you talking know, about three and a half years. Three and a half years where you haven't even had one 400-yard game. Three in total offense. Three and a half years. And no wonder they're making a big deal about the fact that this was Matt Canada's first time on the sidelines. I, I guess they're trying something new. So now, with all the complications that come into the game of football, and you two would know it significantly better than me, significantly better than me, okay? So let me get this straight. You got an offensive coordinator that's taking a lot of heat, and people want him gone. You kept him. And so of all the things you could have done to modify things, to make things better, it was to get him from the booth and to bring him to the sideline. That is what we're dealing with with the Pittsburgh Steelers Steve. in the year 2020. <laughs> Damn. Stephen A. Steve, <laughs> Stephen A., this is a common practice, right? It, it's, it's not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. If you are going to keep him, there are some tweaks that need to be made. And Matt Canada, during his tenure with the Pittsburgh Steelers, before becoming the offensive coordinator, did coach from the sideline. And maybe that's an answer to Bart's question of Kenny Pickett being a better player. Last night, 326 yards was a solid night for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but that will not do when you're playing some of the offenses in the AFC, especially within your division, that can be extremely explosive starting with the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens. There's more needs to be done. I just don't believe they have more. Just, just for clarification purposes, I'm not saying the man was never on the sideline before. I'm saying last night marked the first time he called plays from the sideline. Yes, for sure. I know That's what you yeah. I mean, yeah. there's that, 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 breaking news. There's breaking news. <laughs> he called plays for the sideline. Is it at least no it's in the Pittsburgh Post Gazette? At least they're trying. They're it's undefeated. The they're undefeated yeah. with him on the sideline. Hi. Hey, just Only stay at Michigan right. and, steal, right. and steal some signs. Oh my. And my mama makes you some right. banana pudding. You should let me know, Steve. And mom's gonna brought you some desserts. Hey, RC, you ready for this? Y'all ready to laugh? You ready for laugh? You had some people last night, hey. their eyes bulged out of their head, out of their face like Beetlejuice. Why? Because they saw me roll up in here last night because of what the <laughs> hell I said. I am on the campus of Michigan, and I said there needs to be an investigation. And I'm still on this campus, and I'm saying it on live national television, and I'll be here this afternoon speaking. You're damn right I said it. Ain't nobody mm. hiding. Mm. I'm right here. 
the big house mm. down the block. Mm. Hey, right Steven, down the block. I, I say you mm. good, Steven. I, Steven, I say you good, so you good. You know what I'm saying? They'll stay off of you. I got you. I feel you. <laughs> you got some juice in Michigan. You got some juice in Michigan. All right, we'll leave it there.